My name's Freddie Dodge. We're up here in the Yukon right now, and I've been given the opportunity to maybe teach you guys how to pan some gold and find some gold. I'm up here, I've been prospecting. My family's been prospecting for many years. So we've got a gold mine just up the road here, and hopefully today we can find a little bit of gold that anybody can go out and find with just a gold pan. That's my goal today, is just find some gold, get it in the pan, and show you guys what to do. So let's have some fun. We've got a stream here, and we know it's a gold bearing stream. We're in an area that's produced a lot of gold. So nobody's mined in this section of it right here. So today I wanna go up, I wanna check out different elevations and uh, see what we can find for finding some gold. Let's have some fun. As you can see, I'm not gonna dig right off right in the bottom of the stream bed. We've got this hill that's sloughed off here and it's showing me gravels from when the stream used to be up there. It may have been hundreds of thousands of years ago that stream bed was up there and it left those gold bearing gravels. So the first place I'm gonna try is up on the face of there where I know I can be closer to the old bedrock. And then I'll carry my material down to the stream and we'll pan it and see what we get. Hopefully we find some color. So the reason I've chose this spot on the hill is because of these rounded rocks. This is telling me that sometime in the ancient past, that gold bearing stream below us was here. And it's left these washed and worked gravels. So if it's left these gravels here, there's a good chance it also left some gold and I don't have to try to dig really deep in the stream below. So my best chance for prospecting is on the side of this hill. So hopefully we can find some gold and have some fun. So basically what I'm gonna do here, I don't wanna carry all these big rocks down to the stream off the hill and this material's dry, so I'm gonna classify some of it. There's a couple ways you can do it. If I don't have a bucket and I just got a pan and a classifier, I'll just bring it up the hill with me, it's really light. We'll take some of our material, throw it in our classifier, Leave our big rock on the hill. And there's our material to take down and pan. Now I'm not have to carry all these big rocks down to the stream. If your material's wet, you may have to carry some of the rock down. So there you go, one simple screen, one simple pan, one little shovel, and uh, you can be off panning gold on your own. But today I've also brought a bucket with me. That way I can carry more material off the hill at one time. If I'm, if I'm in backpacking, prospecting, all I'll have is a screen and a pan. But today we're close enough that I'm gonna carry a bucket. So what we'll do here is we'll just classify all our material into the bucket. If you're in big nugget country, check out the top of your screen and make sure you aren't throwing any gold off. And we're basically just gonna fill this bucket till we're comfortable with the weight of it that we can carry. Classify our big stones off. And get our material to take down to the stream to pan. I'll take a little bit of material from multiple places. I usually, when I'm first sampling, I, I don't just dig one hole. I'll take a scoop from here and a scoop from here and a scoop from behind that big rock over there, classify it down and take it down. It gives me a more random area than just digging in one spot because gold might not be just in one spot. So it just gives us an opportunity to cover more ground. So basically we're using our classifier here to keep our big rocks out of our gold pan. So what we'll do is we'll put a shovel in here. You can move it around with your fingers. You can spin it or you can bounce it. Basically it just makes all our small material fall through these classifying holes and uh, away we go. So basically I'm gonna classify as much material as I wanna carry off the hill. Then we'll take it down to the stream, 
Then we'll pan it out and see if we've got any gold in there. Hopefully we find some color. So we've got our classified material we packed off the hill. When you're first starting out, you know, try not to put too much in the pan. Start out, start out with a little bit, let's say a quarter of a pan. Then we'll take it into the water here and we'll see what we find. Hopefully we can find some color in it. So when you start out, get your pan underwater. Get that material suspended. We want all that light material just suspended underwater. And that'll allow the gold to fall through it to the bottom of the pan. So basically, we just want to swirl that material around. Get that fine sand. If you put your fingers in it, you can feel that that sand's kind of floating. It's in suspension, and that's what we want. That, that allows our heavier to gold to fall out and go to the bottom of the pan. So and we'll just keep doing that for a second. We'll get that material where we are confident that gold is settled to the bottom. And then we're going to bring our material forward, and we're just going to start sweeping, using the water to sweep that light material off the top. We'll go back and forth. We don't want to throw the material out of the pan. You never want to throw it out. We're always using that water to gently sweep our material off the top. We'll do that for a little bit, and then we're going to bring our material back in the pan, get it suspended again in the water, slowly bring it forward, then we're going to sweep more of that light material off the top. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. The first pan may take you a while. The second pan will be a little faster. And within a day or so, you could probably be really good at it. We'll also have a technique where we can go side to side. We're sweeping that material off gently side to side. Then we're going to bring our material back, swirl it in the pan, bring it back forward. We're going to try to make our gold concentrate right in that corner of the pan, the opposite side of this. Right in that corner is where we want to put that gold. We want to make it stay there. We're going to bring it back again, suspend it, and then gently sweep it off again. You can see we've already knocked about three-fourths of the material out of this pan. So we're just gently going to do it. Now when you start getting rocks piling up in your pan like that, even though we've classified it, there's still some rocks in there, some 3 8 rocks. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll gently pull those to the side, make sure they're clean, make sure you don't have any nuggets in the pan, because if you go through all this work, if you've got a big piece of gold, you don't want to throw it out. But it shouldn't be on top. So we'll classify it or stratify it again. Then we'll start sweeping it off gently. Bring it back, suspend it. Then start sweeping it off. We'll pull our big rocks out, make sure there's no gold in them, and just kick them off. You can see we're, we're down to the last little bit. Now a mistake a lot of people make, they'll get down to right there and they'll become impatient. And there's still a lot of material, a lot of light material in the pan. And they'll start to swirl it around to see what they got. Be just a little patient. You know, get it, get it right down to the last stuff. Don't leave too much material in the pan before you want to look. And I know it's hard because, you know, you want to see what's under there. But just be patient. Keep sweeping that material off. and hopefully there's gold at the bottom of your pan. See, we're just gently washing that light material off the top. We aren't trying to throw it out. We're using the water to wash it out. Now we can either make it go straight, like I'm doing there. We're washing it off. Or you can make your pan a little bit longer. You tip it under there and you use a side-to-side -side action. You can see that material is going back and forth and back and forth. That actually makes your pan a little longer. So, but, but whatever technique fits you the best, whatever you feel comfortable with, 
or a combination of both. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to wash a little bit more of that light stuff off. Get it in the corner there. A little bit more of it off. We're getting down to the goodies now. All that's left is the heaviest stuff in there. So one more time back. We'll knock a few more of those tans off. So now we're going to swirl our heavies out of the way. And look at there, some fine gold. Not a lot, it's not worth a lot of money, but tell you what, there's 10 colors in there. Really fine colors, so that's what we're looking for right there. That's that yellow gold, that's what we're after. We've tapped our gold up into the side so it's clear of most of the sand. Now we're gonna take our guzzler bottle we want water in it. So we're gonna put some clean water in our bottle. Just fill it right up. Put the lid back on. And now we're ready to pull our gold out of the pan. We can use the water a couple ways. We'll take with it full of water and we'll squeeze the bottle in. Then we'll go over where our gold is. There it is, it's picking it right up. Then we'll give it a few more taps. Clear some more gold out. Then we'll use our sucker bottle to suck those little bitty pieces of gold up. And if you see one over here or one over there, just take your bottle and foot, it'll pull it right up. And there we go. We've now successfully sucked the gold out of the pan. Now our gold's in here. Next thing we do give it a few taps. Make sure our gold's down in the bottom of our bottle. We take our little vial, open it up, and I'll show you guys here. We'll take and we'll pull our straw that's in our bottle down into the bottom. So it's in the cap and none of the straw is sticking up through. Just make sure it's to that point. Then we'll put our cap back on. And there we go. Those little bitty pieces of gold are now in our jar. Another very handy thing with this style pan are these riffles built into the back of the pan. Okay, those are designed so you can pan a little quicker without hardly having any chance of losing gold in it. So I'll spin it around to the riffle side now. I'm gonna liberate my material, get it suspended in the water get it over to that side, and now any gold that's went on the bottom of that pan and going up, it can't get away from us because it's trapped in those riffles on the back side, and we'll still just sweep our material off the top. We'll still just sweep, 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 then we'll bring our material up, knock it down, get it suspended, and do the same thing. We'll use our water to sweep that off. You can see how these riffles are holding that material in the corner. It's very helpful, especially when you're starting to pan, learning to pan, because it gives you confidence that any gold that's stuck to the bottom, you aren't going to throw out. So use them. Here, we're bringing our material out, out, out. We're going to take those rocks, those big rocks. We know there's no gold in them. We're just going to gently, gently take those out. We're getting down deeper. And we'll bring our material back. We'll suspend it again. Work it around, and then let that water sweep that light material off. We're just going to gently sweep it off. You can see how it's just the light stuff coming off. Bring our material back again, swirl it, and gently sweep it off. Now when I get down to this point, these riffles are helping me hold the gold in, but they're also holding my light material in now. So when I get to this point, I'll bring my material to the bottom of the pan. I'll turn my pan around to the smooth side. Now we're going to finish the last of our pan. 
So we've knocked most of our pan down with the riffles, and now we're going to finish it up over on the smooth side. You can see the black sand starting to show up. So we want to slow down a little bit. We'll take here and we'll knock these rocks out. We'll bring it back, get that material suspended, get the lights to the top. When you're doing this, your light material's coming to the surface and your heavy material's falling to the bottom. So we'll bring that light stuff to the top and we'll gently sweep it off. We're just using that water as a broom. We're just sweeping the light stuff off. Go down a little ways, do it again. We want that gold right in that corner of that pan. We're gonna sweep it again. You can see the heavy material now starting to show up. So watch with your eyes over on the side and make sure you aren't throwing any fine gold out when you get to this point. Because we're at the very last of our pan here. So you don't want to pan it all the way down and then throw your gold out at the end. So we're just gently going to knock it down, slowly, sweeping the material off. We'll just take and pick those rocks out. Those bigger rocks that are in there, we know they aren't gold bearing, so we're just going to discard those with our finger. And we're just going to keep sweeping it down. Take it down far enough that you don't have a lot of material left in your pan. Then we're going to bring our pan up. We're going to have a look now. Bring our pan up. We're going to swirl it around. Okay, there's, there's a piece of gold right there showing up. Just some really fine gold. But no matter how fine it is, gold's gold. There we go. As you guys can see, we got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10. We got 11 colors in the pan. So that's a good pan. So we just came over here to another spot and uh, we're going to try some of this bench gravel here that's out on a fan. It's over at our neighbor's mine. And we'll see if we can get some color in the pan here. We'll just once again, we'll get all our materials suspended in water. That'll allow our light stuff to come to the surface and our heavies to drop. So if there's any gold in it, it'll drop to the bottom of the pan. So we'll just get our material suspended, get that material dropped, then we're just going to sweep it off, not push it out. We're going to sweep our light stuff off the top. Once again, get it suspended. We don't throw our material out, we just sweep it off. Gently sweep it off. Just slowly work it down, the same procedure over and over again. We'll just keep sweeping it off. If we get any rocks in there, we'll just uh, clean them up, make sure they're clean, and throw them out of the pan. 
I'm using the riffle side of the pan right now. I'm going to spin it in just a moment. Okay, now we'll bring it up again, suspend it. Now I'm going to bring that material over to the other side of the pan. Same thing, we're just going to slowly sweep it out. And hopefully when we get down to the bottom, there's going to be some color in there. Just be patient with it. And don't throw the material out of the pan. See our heavies are starting to show up now, our black sands. We'll slowly take that light tan sand off the top of our heavies. Get it down just a little bit farther and we'll have a look at it and see what we got for color. See when I shake it around there and suspend it, the lights come to the top and our heavies go deep again. Now we'll have a look and see what we've got. You can see here, gold starting to show up in the corner right at the tip of my finger. That's what we're after. It's not a big piece, but it's gold in the pan. See it right there? There's some more little guys on the edge. That's the best piece there. Then we also have more along the edge. So, I mean, it's nothing to write home about, but uh, it's gold in the pan. This is my brother, Derek, and uh, he's been prospecting and mining back in this country for decades now. So he probably knows this area about as good as anybody. So, oh. See what you get, huh? I'm gonna take a pan here, buddy's a old friend of mine has let us in here to have a prospect around a little bit. It's there's known gold here, so we're gonna have to pan it here and there and see what we can find out. See what you get. There's a little color right there. That's about all I see. But still not a bad little chunk. There's actually a couple more just showed up there too. Little bitty guys. Now oh, there's gold in there. Make sure the all the dirt's out of the sifter, and then what you want to do, you want to get all of the bin material out first. slowly back and forth to get the big material off and once you get to the finer material you want to get the sandy stuff out 
you just want to sweep the light material out of the pan. And once you get most of the material out, you'll start to see blocks in. And that's what you want to see when you're getting close to seeing your goal. If there is color, you would want to look just around the edges of the black sand, like right there, right there, and right there, and right there. There's about six colors in this pan. Okay, when you get your new pan, these pans are plastic pans, they used to be steel years ago but they've replaced them now with plastic and plastic of course is made with oil and oil and gold don't like each other very much so a lot of these new pans will have a little a little film oil and they'll be slick so what I usually do when I get a new pan is I'll, is I'll take some sand or gravel or whatever I can get even a, a real fine emery and I'll take it down to the water and I'll I'll scrub it and it's just like washing a dish in the creek, you know, you just take a little sand and you, you work it around in there and you do all your surfaces and not only will it uh, will it take the oil off but it'll rough that surface up a little bit and the, and the gold likes kind of a rough surface. In the old days we used to burn our steel pans with a with a torch till they were blue and then set them outside and, and, and rust them up a little bit to make that rough surface. But you can get that done here with, with some real fine sand and gravel and water and you just go around in there and you give it a good scrub and, and it may take a few times to get it working the way you want to. So. Little colors. Yeah. Little stuff there. Not a lot, but there's some color in it. It's about a 20 mesh piece right there. So not great, but let me knock it down a little bit more. Not great, but it's got some gold in it. Hard to see it in this water. You can use any water to pan. The clearer it is, the easier it pans, and you can uh, you can see what you're after. Yeah, just some fine colors. All we got there. So guys, it's been a fun day, and I hope you've learned something—something something on panning, and something on where to look for gold. And if you live in a part of the country where you don't have gold, or if you've never panned before. Get yourself a pan, get yourself just some sand, just some beach sand and put some BBs in it and practice. You can practice right in a tub at your house. And uh, with practice in the right place, you know, you can find yourself some gold like that. So the most important thing is have fun. This isn't just something to go panning with. It's also something that gets you out in an environment like this, that some absolute beautiful places and uh, Beyond that, it gives you an opportunity to find some gold. So take your friends, take your kids, go out gold panning. Most of all, have fun. Thank you. Another thing, guys, in our world today, kids don't get out enough. They sit there and they play video games. They sit on the couch. They don't get out to see a beautiful place like this. You know, so just take them out. Prospecting or the chance of finding some gold may be what they need to get them off the couch and go out and have fun because nothing's better than this. Just look around. Thanks once again.
Another good thing about prospecting is uh, fishing. If you're going out fishing, a lot of times, just take a gold pan with you. You never know if the stream you're in has gold and fish, so if you're going fishing, I always have a pan.